So here you can see a bunch of images of me. This is my data set. And here you can see some stable diffusion results that I can get out of that data set. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to do exactly that using your own face or somebody else's face, as long as you have the data set of their face uh, using stable diffusion. Now, there's a lot of tutorials about this. They're very complicated. I'm gonna try to make the most easy and streamlined tutorial about training. That's what this is called. So before we can train our model to actually know what my name is, we need a data set. I took a bunch of images of myself right here. Uh, for you, take images of your face. Um, one thing to note is all of these are 512 by 512 images, the resolution, uh, because that's what Automatic 1111 likes. If you don't have that, you can just crop in your images until they're 512 by 512. But either way, get to the point where you have a data set. Uh, more images is somewhat better. Uh, I just made sure to do a bunch of poses. Ideally, you also have, have it in different environments and lighting conditions. Have a data set. Next, we're going to go into stable diffusion, and uh, let me just introduce something to you. If I want to put my name into stable diffusion, which is Tom, and we click generate, it's not going to generate me, it's just going to generate some random dude named Tom. This is because we haven't embedded ourselves into the model. That's what we're going to do, we're going to do an embedding. Now some stuff's already embedded in here, right? If I do Obama, the model knows who Obama is, that's Barack Obama. And that's because it scraped a lot of data that includes Obama, but it does not include me. So we need to include myself in this model. To do this, go to train and create embedding. So we need to embed ourselves into this model. So let's give it a name. I'm going to call it Tom Tutorial. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you call this. Uh, the thing that matters is that it's unique. So don't use Obama because that's taken. Don't use man because that's kind of general. Pick something unique. Uh, that's one word and that you can remember. And this is going to be our embedding. Don't worry about this. And the number of vectors per token, a lot of people debate uh, what to do for this. Uh, it depends on the number of images. I would keep it between three and four for our purposes. I'm gonna keep mine at three. It doesn't really matter. I don't want you to think about all these complicated settings right now. So pick a name, pick the number three, assuming you have roughly the same number of images and create embedding. So we've made an embedding. Now what we need to do is we need to use this embedding to train, right? Because right now, yes, I made an embedding and I can type in Tom Tutorial, but if we hit generate, it's not gonna know what to do with that. We haven't trained it. So in the training panel, we can now pick our embedding. So I already have it selected. Uh, you should see it in the dropdown. And we're just gonna pick a bunch of settings here. Don't worry about this hyper network stuff. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to set an embedding learning rate. I think yours should be 0 0.005. The smaller this number is, uh, the slower it's going to take, but the more precise and fine-tuned it's going to be. So that's why mine is 0 0.002. It's just going to go a bit slower. You can keep the number as it is. Um, this I kept the same, and for batch size, yours should be at 1. Uh, the larger the batch size, the more images this is going to look at at once while training. However, your GPU might not be able to handle it. Mine can, so I have eight images, so I'm going to use a batch size of eight. Uh, you can just use a batch size of one or two or whatever your GPU can handle. Next, we're going to put in our data set, so basically the images that we're using. We need to uh, copy them, those over. So I'm going to right-click, copy address. So this is the folder directory, and then just paste that in right here. Okay. So, so far all we've done is we've made an embedding and we said, pick this embedding at this learning rate, at this batch size, and here are the images, okay? Next thing we need to do is we need to pick a prompt template. This is where it gets a bit weird. Uh, if you wanna see what these files are, like style and subject and all these, first of all, we are gonna pick a subject because we're trying to train a subject, not a style. Uh, but if you wanna see what these actually are, just so you know, you can go inside your stable diffusion folder you can go to textual inversion templates, and in here you can see the exact same files. What we are gonna use is we're gonna use this subject.txt. I edited mine, so yours is gonna be a bunch of lines. I just kept it as a photo of blank. Mine's gonna to be Tom Tutorial. Uh, so it's gonna train with this as the prompt every single time. Uh, you could also do, maybe you could do a portrait because that seems to be a bit more accurate. Uh, you can pick what you want. So either way, this is my subject file and we are going to use the subject file. 
Um, as for this, you don't need to change anything, and we're almost done. I know there's a lot of settings. Uh, the number of steps is how many times it's going to iterate. So it's going to train on these images over and over and over again. How many times should it do it? The number people like to use is 3,000. That might even be excessive because at some point your model is trained enough and you don't want to overtrain, you don't want to go overboard. Uh, 3,000 is excessive, like it's fine. Um, as we're doing these iterations, we want to see how well it's doing. So we're going to say for every 25 iterations, so 25, 50, 75, spit out an image so we can see it. And also make a copy of the embedding. So we're going to make this embedding that we already made, and it's going to update every 25 iterations. And it's also going to spit out an image. And that's pretty much it. Some people say that they like deterministic. I haven't really messed with it, but seems fine. So again, all we've done is we've made an embedding with this name, we've selected this embedding, picked some settings, and we are going to train this embedding. What you're going to see is it's going to look at our data set, and now it's going to start training. And you can see here are the steps. So it's at step four, and now it's at step five. Uh, this will go faster the smaller your batch size is. But you can see the prompt it's using every single time is a portrait of a blank. Okay. Uh, so now all we need to do is we need to wait for this to get to 25 steps. Uh, admittedly, this is going a bit slower because I'm using screen capture. Uh, but let's wait for it to get to 25 and we'll see what it does. We expect it to give us a not very good image, but each time it's going to get more and more refined. So step 24, step 25, and it generates an image. So to be honest, it vaguely looks like me, uh, which isn't bad. But we expect this to do better uh, every single time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip ahead a little, fast forward, and I'll show you uh, some of the results. Okay, so so far it's trained for like 100 steps, and you can see the image that it's outputting is getting much closer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to interrupt this so we can actually stop our training and resume it later. Uh, let's try actually using these results. So uh, the way we do this is we're going to go into our stable diffusion, and I know there's a lot of folders here. Basically, you just go to textual inversion. That's where you do all your training. And inside of here, you should see your token, whatever it is. For mine, it's Tom Tutorial. And you can see the images that it generates. This is the one you saw. Then it made a bad one, another bad one, and then it got a bit closer. Okay, so 100, iter 100 iterations means four images. And uh, it also means four embeddings, because we said every 25 iterations make an embedding. I'm going to take the newest one, so number 100, and copy it. And then inside where you'd expect our embeddings, uh, we just need to paste it. And we can uh, replace Tom Tutorial uh, with this new one. So I'm just renaming it Tom Tutorial. So now if we go to text to image and type in Tom Tutorial, we don't expect it to be good, but we do expect it to generate something that's vaguely uh, similar to uh, myself. It does seem to like the color yellow, uh, which makes sense since I'm wearing the yellow sweatshirt. Uh, let's try a portrait of a Tom tutorial, since that was our original prompt. And now you can see we're getting something that looks uh, a bit closer. So I guess use the same uh, phrase with the same token uh, as before. So again, it's not doing great, but you can tell it's definitely me each time. And then we could do something like in the style of, uh, or, Maybe we could just do as a painting. <laughs> I was trying to think of a painter and I couldn't think of one other than Van Gogh. So here you can see it's me as a painting and we could uh, do a bunch of other stuff. So as Lego, and we'll see if it gives us Lego that kind of looks like me. Uh, this one's a bit more challenging. So I expect it to generate, I expect to need to generate more results. But here you can see it kind of has the similar hair. Uh, we need to do more iterations is what this is telling me since it's going a bit crazy. So uh, the way we continue is we go to train and we just continue uh, training our embedding. And you're going to see it's going to load in our data set and then it's going to continue uh, from sample 103, right? Because it left off at 100. So it's going to keep training. I'm going to come back uh, after it's trained for a bit longer. Okay, so now I've trained for 277 steps, which again, isn't that much. We were talking about a maximum of 3000 here. So don't expect the best results until you do the 30 minutes or one hour of waiting, but I just wanted to show, again, all we need to do is type in a portrait of a Tom tutorial in this case, and it's going to spit out very good results. Again, remember, 
what our data set looked like. These kinds of images. It has the yellow sweatshirt. It looks like me at the time I had longer hair and it's just gonna generate different results. Now, I've, tr I've struggled with a couple of these. So if I try to do in the style of Van Gogh, sometimes it will give me the right thing or sometimes it will just give me a picture of Van Gogh. Uh, this kind of looks like a picture of Van Gogh. So you gotta be careful uh, what you do uh, here. It might be better to not put in a specific name so it doesn't get caught on that. Um, so maybe as an abstract painting, which is kind of what Van Gogh does, uh, now we get myself as more of an abstract painting. So it's better if you could kind of either use a different model or if you can kind of describe the style. Um, so maybe, maybe as a painting, regal, fancy, wearing a tuxedo, muted colors, see what that gives us. Now you can see right here, I'm in a tuxedo, in the painting, muted colors. So again, this is gonna be better each time. Uh, one thing I'm noticing is there's a lot of frames in these. So I'm gonna use frame as a negative prompt and that should get rid of that. So there you go. That is how you uh, put yourself inside of a stable diffusion as a embedding that you train. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.